This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Alex, I want some bold takes. The football season's upon us. We need some hot takes, and that's what we're doing today. I'm going to come up with five. You're going to come up with five. Our bold takes for the 2024 NFL season. I'm going to go ahead, start us off with my bold take, and I'm going to go ahead and say the Texans – regress i think they're gonna finish Ooh. under what they did last year what did they do uh they were 10 win team right i think they were yeah you they think were they're sub 10, 10 win team. i think there's gonna be a bit of a sophomore slump Ooh, i think okay. that i think it, it's possible because i was going back and i was looking i was looking Stop. alex i looked at the defense and i was like holy moly they lost quite a bit they lost yeah. Grenard. They lost Cashman, Nelson, Collins, Rankins, no, Harriman. Well, I mean, it does when you start to look at the guys that they filter in because we're talking about the corner two spots going to be potentially Kamari Lasser, which I like Lasser, but it's a rookie Aziz. corner. And yeah. then you have which uh, Aziz Alshair. He's very familiar with D'Amico Ryans. Nothing, yeah. No problems there. Very good. It's just you get to the interior of this – defensive line and i'm like how is this team going to create pressure like you got mm -hmm. mario edwards you know who's been he's been all right when you know around the block yeah he's been around the block he's been on a hiatus here and there but when in the game he's been solid but very much rotation guy fatakasi's yeah. coming in there to be just this big massive space Plug. eating nose tackle for the run game you got tim right. settle khalil davis uh, McDelvin Agim, a guy from yep. quite an age ago, used to play <laughs> in Denver. Uh, like, I don't know what they're going to do to create pressure on that interior. Right. I got questions about the defense, and is this, I don't think the defense is going to necessarily improve. Right. I don't think they're going to, like, it's going to be a massive regression, but I think it's going to be enough to where it's like, Okay, maybe they won't be in some of these games. And they're working with a much tougher schedule. I currently have them having the fourth toughest schedule in the NFL. Compare that to this past season where they had the eighth easiest schedule. So okay. my first bold predic prediction is sophomore slump for D'Amico Ryans and company. I'll follow that up. Um, we're going to have a slump for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. I think that this is the first time that they're going to be pushed to the bottom edge of the playoffs. Um, I have them right now as my 15th best team in the NFL. Just overall, I think there are respective holes. The great news, though, for the Cowboys is that the future is a lot brighter, maybe than the present. Tyler Guyton looks like a stud. I don't know how he's going to exactly hold up to like number one team edge rushers for the entire season but the fact is he's shown the propensity to be great and then marshawn neeland um he's honestly looked phenomenal from the first snap that i saw of him so you got some great players there but i do have my relative concerns especially with all those contract situations going on there's just a lot of drama and a lot of unknowns and there's always drama with the cowboys but i feel like there's been a lot more knowns than unknowns than uh, than present. So I do think that they're going to have a little bit more trouble than maybe what they have in the past. I feel like that's a fair one because they have a lot of contracts come and do. Yes. Like it's, it's mainly the money, money situation. Yeah. And I mean, Mike McCarthy's in his final year, Mike Zimmer only signed a one year deal. And yep. then you got to pay CD, which Jerry yep. Jones, what you doing? LOL. Yep. Like, come on. What are you doing, bro? Yeah, that comment was honestly the thing that really set me off. I was like, all right, let's talk about it. Uh, as a guy that's getting ready for a couple of fanny dra fantasy drafts in the next couple weeks. Fanny drafts. Fanny drafts. <laughs> yeah, you got to draft using your fanny. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it made me a bit queasy, dude. It made me a <laughs> bit queasy. <laughs> right. Special thanks to today's sponsor, BetUS. Use the link in the description or the pinned comment to take advantage of an insane 125% signing bonus up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. And today, me and Alex 
Well, we're talking about our hot takes when it comes to the upcoming NFL season, and you can take your bold claims straight to the bank at BetUS, whether it's betting on the win total for your favorite NFL team. Maybe you think they're going to win the division. Maybe they're going to win the conference championship. Maybe they're going to go to the... I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Maybe you think they're going to win the big game. Well, take your bold takes and make some profit off it. So take advantage of BetUS's offer with the link in the description or the pinned comment. But as always, please bet responsibly and bet within your means. My next bold take is TJ Watt will win defensive player of the year. All right, stole the one that I was going with next. Right. No but, way. Yeah, I, I really wanted to go for a Pittsburgh homer one because I was going to possibly go after them with another. Oh, man. Oh, I, I could go with another Pittsburgh. No, one. you know what? I, I'll, go, I'll go counter it. I, I think that's a great one. Um, I think that he, when fully healthy, will just absolutely dominate. And um, I think since Pittsburgh will have – like this is commenting on yours, not mine. Since Pittsburgh will have a really solid rushing focus with quarterbacks that have at least a higher ceiling, um, I think that the defenses will be in a passing mode more – or the defense will be facing a passing attack more often trying to get back to even. So um, I think my number two bold take – is that if the Pittsburgh Steelers do not get Brandon Ayuk, they miss the playoffs. I do have massive concerns over the lack of reliable number two receiving talent. Good thing is we have a good running attack. But the bad news is also with Troy Fautanu pretty much missing the entire preseason with a little tweakage to his knee because he doesn't wear freaking knee, br- uh, knee braces – uh, I'm hoping that the offensive line remains more healthy than maybe it could seem. So uh, I do have my concerns, but Pittsburgh has a kick-ass defense, but we always have had a kick-ass defense for the most part. Uh, it's the offense that still kind of needs that final piece. So my question, turn this back to you, Yeah, is does that mean if they miss playoffs, are they a winning or are they a losing team? I haven't actually gone out and looked at the pure like wins versus losses comparison for both, but I don't think I think Mike Tomlin will sell his left nut not to go uh, under five hundred. So I'll just say winning. Okay, okay. I mean, I I agree with you. I have a hard time believing yeah. that, that it's going to ever happen at this point. I know. So. I know. It sucks. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to another player one. Okay, I'm gonna go with who's gonna lead the league in rushing yards. Ooh, yes. Whose name's not CMC? Uh, <laughs> there's a little caveat there. <laughs> so potentially might lead the league, might be second because you know CMC is a thing. Right. I'm going with James Cook. Ooh. This team now is very unproven at the wide receiver position with, I mean, you got Khalil Shakir, who started to show out last year, but no more Stefan Diggs. Gabriel Davis is gone. They just drafted Keon Coleman. They brought in guys like uh, Matt Collins and uh, Curtis Samuel. So I still think there's obviously going to be a passing attack there, but especially when they made the switch to Joe Brady, this team started to lean a lot more on James Cook. So I think mm. the touches are going to be there. Uh, the the Not that they weren't last year, because, I mean, he still was what? I think he was like fourth in the league, right. fourth, fifth in the league in uh, rushing yards. But I think he will lead the league if – caveat, CMC. <laughs> Just put that respect- out there. I respect that. I mean, I'm saying um, this is a Dolphins fan. Yeah, that's that's pretty tough to say. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, I mean, hey, dude. Hard you choice. Deal, um, you know what? Oh, man, I'm trying. I was gonna like do something a little bit unhinged. I'm going to I'm gonna back off of it. I was do gonna it. go. Get I was, unhinged, no, I was gonna go I'm crazy. Gonna get... but there's there's not enough. There's not enough uh, evidence to substantiate that. Um, you know what? Hmm. 
Mm, I mean, there. I really wanted to go after Garrett Wilson with this one. I was going to say that he's going to be top 10 in MVP voting. I think he's going to be I, Aaron Rodgers' most reliable target. So, Or Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tyrod I mean, Ty was like number one in like big time throw percentage last year. I wouldn't Dude. be surprised if that could happen. Dude, he was the best quarterback on the Giants last year. Yeah. They don't even give me, oh, Daniel Jones no. was hurt. When Daniel Jones was healthy, and you could even throw out that Cowboys game. I think that limits it to like two games at that point for Daniel Jones, but still. Yeah. Was Wait, what was your bold take? Uh, my bold take was that Garrett Wilson's going to be top 10 in MVP voting. Ah, do you want to expand on that? Uh, I think that he's going to be Aaron Rodgers or Tyrod Taylor's most reliable target. And especially with the connection I've seen from Aaron Rodgers and him, he's going to be a focal point of the offense. He's also going to be known as probably, probably the most guy who the guy's most improved because that offense was atrocious last year. So he's going to be in the spotlight. And when the offense improves its efficiency, I think the focus is going to be taken even more off of him, which is going to allow him to get even more open and, He's just going to be someone that pops out of nowhere and looks like the focal point of the offense. And to me, that's somebody who deserves at least one or two MVP votes swung his way. That's a fair one. That's a good one. Now, this one, I'm going to be... I don't think it's controversial. I really don't. Um, I'm I'm going to go with another Russian one, but this is more like a team-oriented one, the Arizona Cardinals last season, especially when Kyler Murray returned, they, they were a very good Russian team. Even without Kyler Murray, they were a very good Russian team. They ended up finishing the season fourth in total Russian yards. I think they finish outside the top 12. Mm. I am not a buyer in, in this offense. Like They added Jonah Williams. He's going to be uh, playing what? Right tackle for him. Paris Johnson now kicks out to left after playing right tackle uh, his rookie year. And, I mean, hey, the, the guy played left tackles in in college, so it's not like it's going to be a big jump. But there could be a sophomore slump there. It's You get to that interior. I don't really believe in the interior. I thought this team was very coached up. I thought uh, Petzin, the OC, did a very good job with the offense. And I think we're going to start to see – uh, more so, probably the interior. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit of that. Not good from the interior. Like uh, <laughs> I feel like Hernandez is fine. I feel like uh, who's gonna be starting at left guard currently? I see Wilkerson, who's an okay mm-hmm. like backup. I think in the NFL, I don't think he's a like a surefire starter. Uh, yep. I'm just gonna go to our last to make sure that that's currently the listed. Uh, oh, even worse. They got Evan Brown. Evan Brown, yeah. basically at that point, he's a he's a journeyman backup in my opinion. But like, right. like outside of Froho, who Froho was actually pretty solid last year. Uh, yeah, like dude, freaking low key. I really liked him coming out of I think it was Arkansas. I can't remember. Um, Hajalti, I think, was a Fresno State offensive line. Was it Fresno? It was something red. I you know red. I could click on his name and find out real quick. <laughs> You know it's Fresno. Ha, Arkansas. <laughs> it, really? Who's the kid from Fresno that I'm thinking of then? Uh, it's um, – Oh, Nite and Moody. Yeah, it's Moody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll get those guys mixed up. There you go. <laughs> I, I liked Moody, man. Injuries yeah. really screwed him over. I know. Uh, not like he was going to be like a superstar, but at least given like – legitimate chance yeah but i think maybe we start to see maybe the james connor start to slow down Mm -hmm. potentially uh from what i've seen trey benson he's just not there yet they currently got um really from what i've heard in training camp that he's out there he's still competing listen i'm i was one of the highest guys on trey benson a lot i love trey benson i still think he's the future but right now i'm here like demarcado is like competing for that run back two spot I don't mm. want to hear that. And I get it. Kyler Murray gives them some of that Russian upside, but I think they finish outside the top 10. I'm willing to push that to 12, but yeah, I'm going to just sit, sit at it with the top 10. Uh, my next hot take or bold prediction bold, is, hot, is that Jameis Winston spin. will be starting games at the end of the year for Cleveland, not Deshaun Watson. That's wild. Sean will get That's benched. actually a pretty wild one. Oh, bench? That's even... Yeah. No, I think he's that getting James... paid too much money to be benched, man. 
listen, man, I think that Jameis brings a lot more upside to the table and that I don't trust Watson to get the rust fully off. I'm, I'm someone who roots for the talent. Obviously, there's other considerations, but <laughs> um, but like talent-wise, I want Watson to succeed. I just, for some reason, I just don't see the rust fully off yet. And um, Jameis is somebody who is an excellent locker room guy, but brings a lot of energy and upside to the table that I haven't seen from Deshaun since returning. And nice. if they want to win a Super Bowl, you got to give yourself the best chance, not what makes the most financial sense. All right. So I'm right now sitting here trying to think, do I like what, what hot takes do I truly have uh, to give? Like, I don't want to go out on a limb for like Jacksonville. They, they burnt, they burnt me and you both last season. Oh yeah. I mean, to be fair, they looked yeah. really good to start the year. <laughs> they did. Uh, and I, this one might be a little bit more boring, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, I think we're going to see the return of the Cincinnati Bengals in the AFC championship. Mm. And okay. You think so? I, I might be willing to push that to like Super Bowl. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with AC AFC Championship game. Uh, healthy Joe Burrow's back. Jamar Chase wants money. T Higgins wants money. Uh, I've heard great things about Amer- uh, Marius Mims. Mims. There we go. <laughs> Doesn't he have a pectoral strain? Uh, yeah, something like that. But yeah, people yeah. started labeling him like injury prone. It was like last year was an ankle. This guy never had injury concerns through his career. I'm not worried about it. But they got Trent Brown. And honestly, Trent Brown, he's kind of like a lower tier Taron Armstead, where it's like he's pretty solid when he's in there, but you can't trust him to play like a full season slate. So, like, even if Mims misses time, I'm not that worried. Mm. It's not. Uh, I think the offense is going to return to being not necessarily a juggernaut, but like a top 10, top 12. I think the defense bounces back. The defense yeah. was terrible last year utterly terrible but go look uh, i feel like they're gonna they, they, they're starting to figure out they're starting to figure out where guys fit the best defensively on this squad they took a big hit with dj reader but i think they did an adequate job of replacing that type of girth mm-hmm. along the interior they uh brought in sheldon rankins they yeah. have uh they drafted rankins kind of jackson cheap, but yeah huh rankins, rankins is fine cheap. He's coming off his worst year of his career. I'm a little bit worried that he's on this, the downhill. I mean, spread. if he's in the rotation, I'm okay with that. Right. And I, that's going to be the thing. Tough. I, You know what? I I trust Coach Lou with this squad. Like, mm-hmm. I think the pass rush, we might see uh, an uptick with Miles Murphy. Yeah. We When it comes to the secondary, I think you got – you got corners that are start, that are ascending in Cam Taylor Britt, DJ Turner. I don't know what the hell Dax Hill's going to be doing next year, but he's on the roster. Yeah. And I really hope – I don't get it. I really hope that Jordan battles the starter there, at, mm-hmm. like in the box, rather than Von Bell. I get it. They're familiar with Von Bell. He played there for a year or so. He played well, but – yeah. Still, Jordan Battle. He's younger. He played better. He played really good last season. I hope he ends up being the star. They add Geno Stone, who was just a freaking interception machine. Yeah. I think we're going to see a bounce back in the Bengals. Mm. Bengals bounce back. Okay, baby. Um, this B. is going to be a very bold take, but if I am Harbaugh, I am resting Justin Herbert for as long as it takes for hit for Herbert actually to be over plantar fasciitis. I am not going to have him continue to play on it. I'm willing to have a top three pick again and have a god awful first year as a head coach in order to make sure my quarterback is actually healthy because everybody I know who's had plantar fasciitis says that it's legitimately living hell. And honestly, it gives yourself time to evaluate everything else on your roster while also getting your quarterback healthy. And then you also get a pick. That's really good. So I prefer for that at the moment than um, to let him kind of play during the year. All right. I don't think they're going to do anything in the first place. So why risk your quarterback getting hurt for a longer term? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So that's five takes a piece. Damn. Do you, do you that's it. Go- I think so. I mean, do you want to go ahead and and 
I didn't we always do six and six though? For drafts, you want to do six? I can. We're I can doing a draft. <laughs> We're doing a draft. We're doing a draft. Screw We're it. We're doing a draft. Screw it. And I was going to say, we can move to... Um, I have my last one. MVP. Like, and we could do awards real quick. But well, yeah, I have no. my last one already. Do you have... Hey, if you got your last one, how about you start with your last one while I okay. discover my okay. last one? Um, the Rams will push it to the NFC. Well, we'll try to make a push for the NFC championship. And... They will end up losing, but they will end up pretty much going toe to toe with um, the creme de la creme of the NFC. And this will be the year that McVay calls it quits. Because I see him when I saw the Rams preseason, uh, I started hearing McVay randomly start trying to act as an announcer or a color commentator on a lot of plays. And it's almost like I'm sensing that he's preparing for the booth rather than the coaching spot. So I think it's time. And I think Matt is going to retire. Okay. 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 I got, I got a hot, I got a hot one. I, I think we, I, I kind of foreshadowed it a little bit earlier in yeah. our stream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a hot take. And you know what? I don't buy into it myself. <laughs> It's more so I buy into half of it. Okay. And it'll make sense in a second. I think Daniel Jones is going to stick around for another year. Because Malik Neighbors is that freaking good. He's going to save Daniel Jones's job. They well, weren't I mean, willing. Like, it was a terrible idea. A terrible contract. I think. Yeah. Well, we could get off him in two years. And what? And miss out on this quarterback class? Well, that sucks. And now you bring in Malik Neighbors. Like, dude, typically, at least statistically, receivers drafted in the top 10, they usually hit and hit big. Yeah. Big-ish. Like, you, you'll you have every now and then, it's like, oh, yeah, Corey Davis. Okay. Not so yeah. much. Hey, Corey, but, had a, he, Corey had a flash there for a minute, though. Yeah, yeah. But I think it was in a contract year, too, actually, for uh, <laughs> the Jets. Yeah. Uh, but – I get that money. Yeah, but I think Malik – is legitimately going to eat this year if healthy. So yep. much to the point where it's like we're going to see a bit of a resurgence, maybe a reminiscence of that 2022 season where they made the playoffs. Ooh. And they're going to be now stuck in a position where they're not close. Purgatory. Like, huh? Purgatory. Purgatory. Where it's I like remember. we're not in position to get a quarterback, though this quarterback class might lend itself yeah to being better to take a quarterback later but then again how well did that work for pittsburgh and kenny pickett needless to say needless to say uh i think it's just gonna put him in a tough position where it's like we might have to stick with daniel jones for another year yeah yeah i can see that i know that's easily i can see that easily I, i don't love that take it's very realistic though it's hot but it's realistic I love half of that take. I think, the, uh, I think the staying part and the neighbors part are factual. I just don't know if they actually will make a strong push. I just don't think that they'll evaluate any quarterbacks at the top of the draft and think it's worth it. And then they'll try to address it later on. Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to be fascinating. Like, depending on where they land, because, like, okay, if they're in that, like, 11 to 20 range then it's like okay then carson beck shadur uh maybe maybe like uh milro elevates himself maybe right. maybe there's gonna be some guys in that in that Jaylen area daniels yeah exactly oh, it happens God. every year joe burrow was a guy right out of nowhere kenny yeah. pickett was technically that guy kind of sort of yeah i mean i think a lot of us had him in like third fourth round entering the year yeah. um yeah, ends up having a big year, but like, yeah, yeah, who knows? So, do you want to do uh, MVP? Let's rock it. Let's send it, dude. Let's send Let's it. Let's do it. No balls. Uh, do you uh, do you feel good starting, or do, would you like me to start? You're the one who's more prepared for this than I am. So you go. Yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you how much I'm prepared for this. Uh, it's all on the fly. We're doing it live. Uh, I'm gonna go Brock Purdy for MVP. For MVP. 
Uh, mm-hmm. He was basically in the run-in down the stretch with mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson, and I feel like that might even be a hotter take if I said Lamar gets his third MVP <laughs> than any of my other takes. So I was like, you know what? Let's do Brock Purdy. He's starting now. Yeah. He's we're getting to that point where they're they're gonna have to decide if they, what they're gonna pay him because they're keeping him. Right. So I imagine he's gonna put out a pretty darn good year. Uh, yeah. Even without Brandon Ayuk, if he does get moved, but rumor is, I say rumors, it's all rumors at this point. We don't yeah. know if he's getting moved. Apparently, the Niners, they have a deal if he's willing to sign it. So who knows? But they've kind of prepared with guys like Cowan and Parasol uh, yeah. for his departure. But still, there's more than enough weapons on that squad for him to thrive and survive. So see, go with her. I, I could totally see that coming to fruition. I'm going to kind of counter your hot take, your first hot take. I'm going to say CJ Stroud might be the MVP. Fully loaded receiving core. Honestly, the running back core is not as I will good. Say, I had no qualm with the offense for Houston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that offense looks great. They have really solid depth at the majority of their line positions as well, for, in my opinion. I think they could definitely upgrade at center, but, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it got to the point where they released Ladarius Henderson for potential injury concerns, but also to make room for other players. So they had enough confidence in their offensive line depth and development that they didn't really need to go after somebody like that. So power to them for pretty much being very self-aware of that, but elite receiving core. And, um, you know, they've pretty much, they added Cade Stover to now a really solid tight end room. So I really do love, I really do love it. It's um, in, you know, Ohio State. It's my team right there. Technically, Penn State, people will say is my adopted team, but the Ohio State is will always be my team. And you're just a fan of the Big Ten. I am a fan of the Big Ten. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go with the offensive player of the year. So let's go non-quarterback. Right. Uh, I feel like the easy answers, CMC, right? Yeah. So... I think I might I might throw a curveball, okay, and not go CMC. Yeah. Um, part of me wants to kind of go, like just go double down on James Cook. I don't think I'm mm. going to do that. I okay. think I'm actually going to go with Brees Hall. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, now that they got some blockers for him, the rushing okay. yards are going to look a lot better. But the right. receiving yards were already good. Yeah. Like, this man, he was he was a guy that could create something from nothing. And now they they get him some legitimate blockers. Like legitimately, they they retooled essentially the whole offensive line, bringing in Tyron Smith. They got yep. Morgan Moses. They also draft uh Olu Fashanu uh mm-hmm. on that interior. You're gonna get Tipman in his second year. So you're expecting him to take a little bit of a jump. You get a healthy Elijah Vera Tucker. Vera Tucker only played part of the season last year. And then they also bring in John Simpson. So it's like, yeah, this this team feels like it's going to want to run the football for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, for goodness sake, you're bringing in two Raven players. (laughs) So I'm going to go with Brees Hall. Okay. Okay. Um, Looking at the options, I am actually going to go Jamar Chase. Uh, I think, I don't know what the situation is going to be with T. He could be even traded at the deadline, theoretically. So, you know, you could definitely keep that card open. But uh, I think especially if they're going to make a push this year, Jamar Chase is going to be the guy that they go through. Uh, what, they have Zach Moss, right? They have Zach Moss and Chase Brown yep. as their starting duo. Those two guys are one-cut home run hitters. And that's not somebody who I think would be, they're not going to be getting 20 touches a game, most likely. So I do believe that, you know, it's going to be more of a focus on the passing attack. And there is a focal point of the passing attack, and that is Jamar Chase. Nice, nice, nice. I almost got an LSU jersey of Jamar when I went and visited LSU. Really? Yeah, they actually have them there. Dude, they didn't have the purple one. I wanted the purple one. You got to go the purple one. Yeah, they had the white one. And I was like, oh, give me the purple. But Yeah, no, well, nobody likes away jersey, so... My buddy was like, I prefer it. And I'm like, no. Let's get the hell out of here. You prefer coffee stains. That's what yeah. I'm hearing. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I, I kind of already alluded uh, for defensive player of the year. I have TJ Watt. 
Yeah. I think he's he's fine. He's always in contention year in, year out. Mm. Um last year, uh last year was it was Miles Garrett, right? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, so like those two go back and forth so much. And I mean, Edge is it's such a hotly contested position with like Nick Bosa, Micah Parsons. Yeah. Uh you, you got Aiden Hutchinson trending that way, Max Crosby. Uh, but like what uh, he, he does a little bit of everything just because what he can do also in coverage. And he, he's just such a difference maker as a playmaker, whether it's forcing a fumble picking it up or even an interception i think that kind of edges like helps him edge out the others among that yeah i mean the easiest one would be miles um but i mean like for the sake of a video let's have like a little bit more fun here i am actually going to opt for aiden hutchinson i think he takes another step this year yeah i mean i think that detroit has such a balanced offensive attack that they're rarely going to be behind so I trust that I'm just thinking like logically what offenses are or what opponents are going to have to pass the most, like what offenses are not going to like let down their defense and Detroit is one of them. that's super duper reliable. So I trust that Aiden will be basically going against true pass situations far more often than other guys I might want to put on here. Yeah. All right. Let's move to the rookies. Let's yeah. go offensive rookie of the year. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm going Caleb Williams. I, 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 I we kind of talked earlier that all the rookies quarterbacks have looked pretty good in preseason. Yeah. I thought Caleb probably looked the best, slightly. You know, again, it's kind of yeah, it's close. But I think Caleb is just that big of a difference maker. Drake May might not start the year. He's gonna yep. be on a bad Patriots team. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not gonna see Michael Penix. Bo Nix is going to be also kind of in a similar boat when it comes to yeah. his squad. Uh, who are the others? Uh, JJ McCarthy, we ain't got to worry about. Uh, Jaden Daniels could give him a run for his money, but I mean, I think Caleb, the talent is just, is just phenomenal. I think he's going to flourish with the l- literal numerous amount of weapons that he has there at his disposal. Yeah. So I, I feel like he's kind of the easy one. Yeah, he'd be my choice, but I'll just throw the curveball. I'm gonna go Malik Neighbors. I think he's, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's the option. So, uh, and he's super dynamite as long as he stays healthy. Knock on wood, man. It's injuries suck, unbelievably. Like I just mm. so praying that he stays healthy and all these rookies stay healthy as well. Um, but yeah, I mean. Should we do one that's like quarterback and then one that's not quarterback just for funsies? Oh, for rookies? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. down. Okay. Well, the quarterback so- for me would be Jaden at that point uh, because I think he has a really solid receiving core and has that rushing ability. Yeah, you took freaking Malik Neighbors. That's a good one. Um, I the Obviously, there's not a running back that's going to do that because, I mean, yeah. Brooks there's is no going to miss time. There's no other – legitimate starter at the running back position unless like Kyrie Williams gets hurt. I think Blake Corm's Blake like Corm's good. a great yeah. position. By the way, I was able to nag him in that rookie draft on my dynasty league. Good. I did so I have my handcuff for Kyron. Yep. <laughs> thank goodness thank thank God. Uh <laughs> Marvin Harrison's such the is just the easy choice. He's yeah. gonna get the volume. Yeah. Uh, there's really nowhere else y- you can really go or at least you should uh right. i mean again like who's gonna be who's gonna be taking re- receptions out of his out of his mouth i don't know that's the way i should have put it but right you get what i mean uh Trey yeah. McBride, <laughs> sure but yeah. like michael wilson maybe like yeah now like th- it's this offense is probably gonna run through marvin harrison there's a reason why he is in fantasy a first round pick right now so yeah yeah and i'll tell you this right now i'm looking to get that marv kyler stack in fantasy i'm That'd hoping nice. i'm praying if that he can stay great. healthy and if herbert actually comes back i could see lad mcconkey being able to um take a <laughs> yeah. massive but that's yeah. so minimal in potential but yeah, i could see him eating a lot of just volume yeah. there in the slot if it's anything like it was with keenan allen he's gonna get ample opportunity 
I honestly didn't see um, – when I was watching the Chargers, I didn't actually pay attention to the offensive line. How did Joe Alt do? I don't recall. Hmm. Because, I mean, I remember watching Guyton and then Latham, both of them. I think I really watched solid. Charger preseason game yet. Yeah. Um, you guys can feel free to leave that. But, like, if we were doing an OPOY of guys who would never get selected, i.e. offensive linemen, I would actually go Tyler Guyton. He looked – he popped off. Uh, Latham looks great, too, which was a big surprise seeing him transition so well. Uh, knock on wood, that's what continues. I think Foshnew looked like he had the most room for development. Yeah, Mims had a lot of like standout like yeah. clips from training yeah. camp on X. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So defensive rookie of the year. I'm going with Byron Murphy. I was thinking going edge. Ooh. And then I was like, you know what? I think Murphy's gonna eat similar to what we saw from like Kobe uh Turner. Turner, thank you. I was like, I was yeah. about to say Kobe White, and I was like, that's not right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Byron Murphy because he was already eating in the preseason game. He had, uh, I think he had one sack, and then he had one that was a close sack, but got mm-hmm. away from him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, I think I think he, you're gonna see that motor. You're gonna see, especially with freaking Mike McDonald there as the the head coach. Yeah. That's a team that's gonna rely on guys being able to win one-on-ones you're not going to be getting a lot of pressure so that's going to save a lot of production for the defensive line Mm. and like yeah i mean boy mafia kind of had a had a uh breakout year uh last year they get a healthy uh uh they they have a couple other yeah they have a couple of other guys that we're still kind of waiting and seeing, but I think I think Murphy's probably going to reap the benefits on that interior, and he's going to have a very impressive number by the end of the I'm year. I'm excited it comes for him. Pressures and sacks. Um, I'll just give one and give my honorable mention. One would be Jared Verse. I, I'm just thinking of teams that would have a lead and basically guys who could end up getting pressures and sacks based on pretty much guaranteed passing down situations. Makes sense that the Rams, would have been my, my probably my yeah. honorable mention. Yeah. So um, my honorable mention to your honorable mention is uh, Marshawn Neeland because I think that there's going to be a lot of focus on Parsons and Lawrence, and he, especially after Sam Williams tore his ACL, is pretty much in line to be the guaranteed starter. So he can definitely clear up some reps. He looked really explosive in his preseason. So shout out to the boys. I love that. I love Marshawn Neyland. Yeah. All right. So come do you want to do a comeback player of the year? <laughs> you want to talk about a comeback player of the year? Sure. You go first on this one though. Okay. Uh I think the easy one's probably Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like the guy to go for. Yeah, I mean hey, he I mean, played there's one, one other. Five. Yeah, he but yeah. I mean at least Kirk Cousins played like half a season. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. But yeah, I mean, dude, he, honestly, if he goes out there and he just plays the full season, he, he might just win that period. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, played yeah. all of five snaps. He's got the talent around him. The offensive lines should be better. The Brees Hall is amazing. Uh, they, yeah. they brought in Mike Williams to help out. They drafted Malachi Corley. Uh, Tyler Clock- Conklin's a very solid tight end. Might not be like yeah. this like crazy top tight end, but he's a solid one, solid receiving uh, option. So Aaron Rodgers is kind of the obvious choice. Yeah. I mean, the other choice then would be Kirk, just because. Yeah. Who's yeah. also in a very good situation. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. like I'll see which one you would talk about so I can just like reverse and just go after that. <laughs> But arguably, yeah. I would say cop, probably Kirk is in the better situation. I agree. A more solidified offensive line, elite running back, great weapons. Yeah, there he's in a good spot. Yeah, I mean Bijan and Brees, though. I mean th- those are probably it's like after CMC. Yeah, those are like your the the top running backs in the league. Dude, I uh, love Brees. You wanna? Oh. I, I can. I got an honorable. Uh, I had an honorable mention, and I just lost it in my head. I I had it, for, and now it's gone. For comeback player of the year. For comeback player of the year. 
I don't give a shit. Well, I mean, oh, Tech- no, I remember it now. Talk about it. Did Diggs get hurt last year? I'm tripping. I, I for some reason it's late at night. Uh, Trayvon, he got hurt yeah. last year. He was yeah. hurt in uh, week two against the Jets. So yeah, Trayvon Diggs would be my honorable. Uh, I was gonna say uh, this one's it's two players, but it's one position, and it's the Steelers' quarterback position. <laughs> Fields or Russell Wilson, comeback yeah. player of the year. <laughs> Dude, I just. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm just confident in either of them. And I want to be confident in both of them. I need to see them both this week. I think there's a nice reliability and consistency, even if the floor is really... Yeah. Well, the ceiling's really low, and the floor is just like moderate at best with Russell Wilson. It's just the ceiling's so much higher, but also there's a lot of high-risk, high-reward when it comes to Justin Fields. I mean, shoot, yeah. he, he had the fumble in preseason, so it's like two, right? I think it was uh, two. I don't, I can't remember. I only remember the one, but could have been two. Regardless, I mean, regardless, I think both are good options for potential comeback player of the year. Yeah, for sure. Huh. But hey, I think we did it. I think those were solid names for yeah. potential award winners. Those were good takes. Well, yeah. maybe not good takes, but they were solid takes. I don't think they were like terribly hot. I mean, well, there were a few, but yeah. I mean, we ended up like ditching the easier answers as well, apart from comeback player of the year. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, that one's like, who gives a crap? <laughs> it's like a participation. Trophy. What old quarterback will play longer? I don't know. Maybe Joe right. Flacco uh, comes back and does it. Dude, again. Joe looked actually really solid in the preseason game, man. I was he like, is- I'm so happy for him. I think he's just going out there like it's a turkey bowl. Right? Like, he's just slinging it. He's right? just vibing. Like, what that's the how. I, that's how I play once a year, <laughs> every year. I don't throw. Interior hamstring. Was, <laughs> okay, no, I did that in a jumping castle. That's a story oh, for right. a time. Yeah, yeah, that was the best New Year's Eve of my life. Dude, the straight up, we got to we gotta do the combine. We got to do the YouTuber combine and football game. Dude, I'm I, I'm down, dude. I am feeling great now. Like, I've been working out more, Good. and Good. I'm feeling more explosive. I'm moving well. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm down to my l- lowest weight since the, uh, the pandemic. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. I want to get back down to 165. That's when I was... That's my most buff. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get there, but I just want to get to that weight. I'm not going to get to, <laughs> right. to my most. Uh, I'm actually going to weigh myself in a second, but because I'm just like, I don't even know. I haven't weighed myself in like two months, but um, Signaler talked about Dallas Turner should have been mentioned. It's just like how many He's times are rotation. Teams, well, not only that, but how many times are teams going to be in passing situations? You know, like they're going to be probably trying to run the clock out on, Minnesota, because they're. I mean, be yeah, there's going to be ample opportunity just because of Brian Flores. If it's anything like what we saw last year, sure. But comparatively to others, like yeah. you're saying, he's not going to have the most opportunities. But but yeah, also that team, like they're going to struggle at corner. Unfortunately, like they they've I know, they it sucks. It, yeah, it right. sucks. It Obviously, sucks. you had the tragedy with uh, Kyrie Kyrie Jackson, and then you had uh, Makai Blackman. I think it was the ACL. Regardless, he's out for the season. Like, those are two big hits. I mean, so much so, they already gave up on Booth and they traded for, uh, what, Noah and Big Nagani. And he's now on his third team in three years. That's great. That's a great feel. But, like, you got you to gotta imagine teams are going to take advantage of that, that aggressiveness and they're going to utilize and capitalize on the quick passing game. They Shit, just are. I'm, a fat ass. I'm 171. I'm 175. <sighs> Dude, during the pandemic, I was at uh 190. Ugh. Most Damn. unhealthiest I've been. Well, I stopped working out and I was working from home. Like it was when I was still doing this part time and I was still doing my other yeah. job. No, uh, dude, during COVID, I was down like 20 late mid 2019 to mid 20 or like late 2020 was my lowest weight. I was like 125 to 135. Dude, I think it was probably like six years ago. So like 
2018. Yeah. I was at 165. I was benching the most of my life. I was all my lifts were the heaviest of my life. Oh yeah. I was good. dude, it was disgusting. I think uh I was doing now. reps of eight on 175 or 275. I said 175, 275. Got it. Uh, which now I I could I could only dream of hitting two plates ever again. Like that was always my goal, just to get a part of that two plate life. And then I just yeah. kept I I went further. I was like, this isn't even my final form. Uh, squats I've always been able to push pretty good weight in, yeah. which I hate. It, my legs don't look like it. I'd rather had legs that look like they could squat, and then just not be able to do anything. Cause I hate That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> yeah. I go out there with these stupid chicken looking legs and I push like three and a half plates, four plates. Right. And it's like, Oh wow. I didn't know you could do that. He was like, I, I wish, I wish I didn't have to do that. Right. About that. I wish I didn't have to do that. I was deadlifting the most of my life and hated my life for it. Like I think during a time, like deadlift became my, like my least favorite like, mm. workout. Okay. Like, I used to love it, and then I started going up on weight, and then I really started to hate it because mm. I just couldn't commit to it. Like if ever like I'd feel bad form, I'm like, nope, got to go down, can't do it. Right, right. And yeah, I was only not doing. You can, it's, it's not something you should or can really push through shit form. Yeah, That's and I was only there. doing reps of four to six because I was yeah. going for like explosiveness. Right. And then you know. Of course dude there's this guy um on instagram called ben yanes like that dude he he sometimes is a little bit of an extremist with using machines for alternate purposes but like he's like perfect because he uses like a skeleton model in order to show how certain exercises actually pull particular muscle groups and it's like there's some like there's some really good nuggets of knowledge from his game or from his like from his um content it's like i hit this like rear delt thing last night where it's like the cable and it's like all the way up here and you face away from it so like your shoulder is completely stretched and it's like oh my god i haven't felt my rear delt like that in like years so yeah man yeah look yeah, at us no, well i mean i only do lightweight now i just do a lot of reps so. Yeah, I always do like eight to twelve. That's that's my rep range. Yeah, I, dude, I'm pushing. Uh, I I do like fifteen to twenty, just because like I'm doing really lightweight because I'm doing okay. it from home, so it's like just with what I have. Gotcha. So like, yeah, I, no, I, I have to do that much just to get the workout, get a burn going. That's true. And like, I'm looking. I'm, I'm just looking yeah. to be functionally athletic. At this point, I, mean, I could care less. Nice about right I, i've passed that stage in my life right unfortunately well, it was honestly some of my favorite years was just like being mad on pre-workout and they handed me the smell and salts actually i've never had smell and salts but i i really wanted to I wanted to try it, it. i've I always wanted, wanted to, to. Like, i was just like, like dang wow. dude how did i miss the boat on smell and salts because like for me, like back in the day, pre-workout was like, dude, if this pre-workout doesn't make me feel like, if my heart doesn't feel like it's about to explode unless it lifts something, it's not good pre-workout. I used to do yeah. like Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, uh, no. I think, dude, that was my favorite. And then uh, it used to be Jacked 3D, I think. And then it got taken off the shelves because I guess in the UK, uh, it had like an antidepressant or something in it that was like... Uh, uh like basically it didn't pass there what what it need what it had in it so they had to take it off the shelves and put out a new formula yeah oh, that's neat yes yeah, a pure and then after that it was just trash so i was just like jumping from like pre-workout to pre-workout finding yeah. like i was honestly one step away from like just give me cocaine <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's are funny. you addicted oh. only when i left no <laughs> you you see me clapping that ain't chalk that ain't oh chalk coming up god, <laughs> that'd be that'd be one i mean hell that'd be one hell of a rush i'll tell you that this video is powered by bet us